everybody. It's Josh Wilson, and we're back in the studio at the Big Dog Podcast with my man, Jonathan Mack. What's up, Jonathan? Nothing much. Hanging out. Yeah, man. I'm glad that we're in here. Sorry I had to cancel on you yesterday. Uh, it is all good. Apparently, one of those some, deals. Apparently, some things were going down. Bro, it's... I mean... There's always stuff going on, which is a good thing, because if you don't have anything going on, you should be concerned, right? So, in, I mean, I get concerned when it comes to my life, but, uh, and it's not because shit isn't going on. There's always something going on, but it's been particularly going on uh, the last several weeks and even leading up just to walking in here. But you and I, man, we've been burning the roads up and the airports up. You were up in New York, right? Uh, yep. How was that? You had another show? Yep. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I'm not the best with, you know, taking care of myself when I travel. I eat terribly. Sure. I uh, struggle to hydrate. So I try to do a little bit better job of that this trip. How was the show though? Uh, it was fun. Yeah. About 200 people there. It's a lot nice. Of fun. That's cool. And where was it? Uh, Chelsea Music Hall. Nice. Cool place. Yeah. That's neat. That's neat. And then how was this set up through the people helping you with the album or something different you did? Uh, something different. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Different promoters. Okay, cool. That's good. Um, that's real fun. When did you get back? Uh, I did not get back until Sunday. I had a four nice. and a half hour drive back from DC because there were six different accidents in between DC Lord and Richmond. Come on. Yeah. 95 people, was nice then. Yeah, people cannot drive. No, they can't. And we, we won't share the story you just told me on air, but uh, you had an interesting ride. <laughs> it made oh, yeah. it fun. Jonathan's my type of guy though. I'll, I'll leave it at this. Uh, Jonathan went ahead and booked book the whole seats on the bus the whole like the table and the cross seats and that so you got plenty of leg room you can put stuff out yeah you can do your whole deal you don't got to worry about randoms by you and things like that and still somehow still no peace the universe the universe said no oh man i get it that's crazy we were we were traveling Devin and i went our little anniversary trip um last week and we were out in california went to santa barbara we love it out in santa barbara and we were there for a couple of days and we flew out there because we needed to, to get kiki She's been traveling with my mom the last couple of weeks. And so we were bringing her home. And so Saturday, my mom and Kiki and um, our, our friend Kendra and her kids, they came up to hang out at the resort with us for the day. And we were just chilling by the pool in the cabana, just catching up and telling stories and just talking, hanging out, having a good time. And it, it's funny, man. It, California, like from a politics standpoint and stuff, like I would never want to do business there again. Um, you know, I don't think I could be there like 12 months out of the year, but man, I'll tell you right now, leaving Virginia and flying into Santa Barbara and knowing that the hottest day was like 73 degrees and there's zero humidity and it's the, the, the temperature fluctuates each day by 10 degrees at night. It's like 60 during the day. It's like 70. If it gets up to 72, it might get down to like 62. It's just this 10 degree fluctuation. It's, and no humidity. It's beautiful. The humidity is the biggest thing. I mean, being outside in Virginia right now feels like you're walking through a hot tub. Well, like, no, it, no, it does. And and the thing that's funny is, like, we're out there in, Cal in California. People in California are crazy. And I can say whatever, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm born in California. First, this point, quarter of my life was California. And, you know, it. But people are crazy out there. People are wild. But I will tell you. They're wild and crazy, but people are very relaxed. A little of it has to do with drugs, and that's fine. But I actually think it goes a little bit deeper than that. I think it's because they don't have humidity. And so I started playing this theory in my mind a little bit. I was like, you know where else people are pretty chill? And it's hot as shit? Scottsdale. People are pretty chill in Scottsdale. And it's 120 degrees, but there's no humidity. You people don't are chill. I think humidity creates assholes i think it, cre it yeah it brings something <laughs> different out of you because i mean the best example is florida oh yeah for sure yeah uh, yeah that plays into my theory because we were down in florida with the kids earlier this summer and i don't people are not as friendly and relaxed i mean it, it it's the humidity that does to you and like in texas the further south you go in texas like dallas dallas is fine austin People can kind of be assholes. Get down to San Antonio. It's getting hotter, more humid. Assholes. And it, it's just not as super humid in Dallas. But the thing that's funny is, like, we were just, 
okay, one of my trainers passed out actually today, this morning in a turnover. And um, like, that's terrible. Like straight up blacked out. Yeah. Well wishes. Yeah. And she's going to be fine. She's going to be fine. Embarrassed, but she's going to be fine. And another trainer was there. So obviously, you know, the, the client was super concerned and whatnot. Well, she just wasn't feeling well. Well, sure. Shit. COVID. And she, she's just sick as shit. And so she needs time to rest and heal and, and recover. And so she's not the fortunate one who got COVID and just a, you know, I don't even have any symptoms. I just, you know, I've got this thing and this is what's going on. No, she has, she is symptomatic and she's a mess. And so we're calling clients and we're like, Hey, look, I know your dog's supposed to come in tomorrow or in a couple of days. This is the situation. Uh, we need to push you back a week. One, because, you know, there's still a couple of days that you're supposed to let people clear or whatever. But two, like the person feels like hell. So we're going to have to push back a couple of days, get you started. We'll roll on as normal. No big deal. It's just going to be a couple of days. Really, really sorry. And they're pissed about it. And I'm like, damn. What? Like the selfishness of people. And we've talked about it before. Like just like simple human. You asked me how the client responded where she blacked out where the client's okay. We're like, yeah, they're fine. Like and I, a genuine human response. Like, Oh my God, are you okay? What's going on? Like concern for the random human, whether you know them or not, somebody passes out, whether you know that person or not, most human beings are going to go to that stranger's aid. Cause that's not a normal thing, right? This person has an extreme measure taking place and it's not, Oh my gosh, I, I hope they're okay. You know, yeah, just let me know what we need to do. It's this entitlement and frustration and and rudeness and disrespect. It's nuts. It's absolutely insane. And to support my my thought process even more, when we were in Miami and flying back, and they had us on that plane, and I fell asleep. And they woke me up, tell me we weren't leaving. And it's like two in the morning and we're already delayed and we've been on this plane for hours. I told you about this, didn't I? I went, no, you did not. But that has to be the worst oh, feeling Lord. ever to fall asleep. Like I'm going to wake up in a new place. Then. So, oh yeah, no. And the thing is I woke up, Lo poor Logan, God bless him. I love him. He was, he thought it was funny because I'm asleep on the plane. Right. And so I'm just, and we're, we're not, we're at the gate still. We've never pulled away from the gate. They just put on the plane. We're supposed to leave. We're already delayed a couple hours. They're like, oh, there's just a simple little maintenance thing we need to fix real quick. Well, this simple little maintenance thing's taking a minute. I fall asleep because it's late. We've been on vacation that week. Logan's going to get a, a picture of me, and the idiot has the flash on. So I actually am asleep. I wake up to this bright-ass flash in my face, and I'm hot. Like, I'm swinging. I'm ready to bust every tooth out of someone's head. I don't know if it's like a flashbang. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm just pissed. It's not. So I'm pissed about that. And then they're talking about, we got to get off this plane. I'm like, what do you mean I get off this plane? Like, it's canceled because waiting for the maintenance stuff to be done, the crew now is clocked out. The crew cannot fly anymore that day. So I'm like, okay, no problem. So we're getting off this plane. They've already canceled so many flights that day. There were thousands of people trying to get flights rebooked. So like, you need to go to this line. You need to go to that line. I'm like, I'll be damned. I'm not getting any line. I got Devin and the kids. We're trying to get home. We've been gone for a week, a wonderful time. And now it's going sideways, right? Now, I'm not necessarily the most cool headed person, but I'm not going to embarrass myself or my family in public. Airport's always the worst place. Except for this night, everybody. Oh, great. <laughs> I was going full ass. <laughs> I was all in. I asked the 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 gate guy, I said, hey, sir, what um what baggage claim can we get our stuff from? Because all of our luggage is on the plane. I'm like, screw it. We're just gonna stay in Miami and we'll get a plane a another day. I'm not gonna stay in this airport. My kids, everybody's tired. Like we're just gonna get the hell out of here. And, you know, we'll spend Father's Day, I guess, in there in Miami. It'll be cool. What are the worst things to do, right? No problem. By no means am I bitching or complaining about that. I don't want anybody to take it that way. I was just like, that's what I'm going to do with my family. Y'all can go get in line here at this airport and deal with this chaos. Because I know that the app is going to automatically put us on a plane and assign us seats. And I also know that because there's four of us, they're going to take the four of us in the seats that I paid for 
together, and they're going to throw the four of us all over the airplane to be whatever it's going to be. There's not going to be four seats together for us to fly together. It's just going to be chaos. So why do I want to go stand in line for hours, listen to all the people cussing and screaming and all this stuff? I'm just going to let the app do what the app do, and I'm going to move on down the road. Sir, what baggage claim can we get our luggage from? Sir, you need to go get in that line. Like, no, sir, I'm not going to get in that line. I just need to know what baggage claim I'm going to get our luggage from so I can get my stuff and we, we can get out of here. Mm -hmm. Sir, I told you, you need to go get in that line. What baggage claim, sir, can I go to to get my bags? We're, we're not going to get in that line. I just need to get my bags so my family and I, we're going to go to a hotel and we'll figure this out tomorrow. Sir, I told you, bro. My, my grandmother would be so upset with me. Mommy, I'm sorry. I think I already told you the story. You looked disappointed at me at Sunday supper when I was telling the story. So you already heard it. Sorry, Mommy. I cussed this dude out. Look, man, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I ended up apologizing to my family the next day. Like the kids, like, hey, guys, this is not how you represent winning. This was, I did not handle that appropriately. And ultimately, it's Logan's fault for waking me up with that flash, that <laughs> picture. Uh, because I don't sleep a lot, but when I fall asleep, I'm asleep. And when I wake up, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm not groggy. It doesn't take me an hour to wake up. I'm not that type of guy. I wake up, I'm ready to roll. But it's because I have slept. I was, my sleep was interrupted in an uncomfortable situation and position to a flash dude, Jonathan, I was cussing him out and I'm clapping in the dude's face, cussing him out. F bomb, F bomb. I'm not getting any mother mm -mm -mm, clapping, clapping, clapping. And I'm like, what the hell is happening right now? So, um, he says T four. Mm -hmm. They're going to come get you. And I'm like, thank you. I appreciate oh, it. Oh. oh yeah. No T four baggage claim. He says T four. And I'm like, cool, no problem. Thank you. So I walk out the door with my family. And people are seeing this, so people follow me. Because I've established myself as the leader, the alpha. I done cussed out this poor guy who's been getting cussed out all day because I'm an asshole. <laughs> and so I'm heading to T4. I got our, my kids and Devin, and we're looking for T4. Bro, I swear to God, there were about 20 baggage claim carousels there wasn't t nothing there was no four nothing he just said some random crap made me think it was a baggage claim and i took uh -huh. my family out the door and then once you're out that door you can't get back in because you've left the airport technically yep i sat there and i just kind of laughed and i was like I respect that dude so much. Yeah, checkmate. He totally handled me. He, got me. he threw me out of the airport. There's not much you could do there. No, so all these people, they're all standing around now looking for luggage. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> Let's just go, Devin. And so I'm trying to get, can't, there's no rental cars because we're like, all right, we're just going to drive home. What are we going to do? Got a hotel. We went to the hotel. It's 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning now at this point. So when I booked the hotel on the app, it's like book for tonight. I'm like, yeah, it's tonight. Booked it. Not thinking that I'm another day now. So it's not the night that I'm currently living in. It's tonight, which is Saturday night now. You following me? Brother, man. This so we roll to the, to the hotel. And uh, I thank God I've got good status with these people. And lots of points. We're at a good level with them because I roll in there with my family. Now it's 3.30. And I'm like, yeah, checking in for Wilson. I got two rooms. Like, Mr. Wilson, we don't see anything for you. I'm like, no, you definitely got it right here. They're like, that's for tonight. I'm like, yeah, tonight. They're like, no, nah, Mr. Wilson, tonight's like two, two night. <laughs> it's, it's Saturday, sir. Oh, that lady worked it out. She got us in there. We were going to sleep. We could be there for that day. We could stay there through the weekend. The way my reservation was, she had us set up and took care of us. We got our luggage about three days later. <laughs> Devin had to go get it down at the airport. But it was all this chaos. And, like, I got out of character because of the humidity. I travel all the time. And stuff gets delayed all the time. I've never. I'm always that dude who's like, hey, you know, it's, it's really literally not these people's fault. The person who's having to relay this message right now, it, it probably hates their life. 
because they're always the one who has to deal with all this crap, yet they're not the one who plays into any of the decisions. Yeah. And so I never, ever, ever have been the guy who gives them a hard time. I'm just always, hey, man, I really appreciate you. Thanks a lot. Every single TSA person, man, I really appreciate you. You know, they're wearing people out. They're in a bad mood. They're fussing and everything. I was like, hey, man, what's going on with you today? How you doing? Hey, ma'am, I really appreciate you. Thank you. You know, I'm just cool with everybody. Not that guy. But the fact that he got me and he got me out of there. Yeah, he hit you with the okie doke. He did. He did. I was shook. And it, I just started laughing. I was like. See, I thought T4 was going to be like he said that into the little walkie talkie oh, on no, his no, vest. No, no. And then you just got attacked by airport security. No. But this little old man and his wife were there in this whole situation also. Right. And the little old man, he didn't speak uh, English very well. And he was very confused. We were all very confused. A lot of people had fallen asleep, okay, because it was hours, and it's the middle of the night. <laughs> this, this little old man and his little wife, the door opens to go to the baggage area. He stepped out like one pace past the automatic door and saw the security lady, and he stepped back in to ask a question. This lady went bonkers on this guy. Sir, you need to leave the airport right now. Mm-hmm. And he's not understanding, right? And he would just, I, I don't even know. I couldn't even understand the question he was asking, but it was not like clicking that, like, hey, bro, you just did this. And it wasn't like he walked out and came sprinting back in with luggage, you know, screaming, hollering, all this stuff. Do, the little old man just us a pace. I don't even think his other foot left the area. And she's like, if you do not walk out, I'm calling the police. If you do not walk out, I'm calling the police. If you do not, it's all she keeps hollering at him. Call the cops and these old people. I'm like, okay, here we go. This is where it's at. So it, it was crazy, but all that to bring it back around humidity. It's terrible. And it makes people be assholes. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. We, we get back from California. I'm like, man, this weather's so great. We had a layover in Atlanta and it was early. So it wasn't nasty yet. We get back here in Virginia. Hadn't, hadn't seen really like rain in, in four or five days. Of course we land here. What's it doing? Pouring down rain. And it is, it's honestly like walking through a hot tub. It's insane. Regardless of you're in a place where it's humid or not, my message to you is just try hard not to be an asshole. Like the person you're probably being an ass towards didn't make it humid. And if you really think about it, the source of all your frustration is the moisture in the air <laughs> because the people chilling with the dry heat, or the, the no heat and sunshine and a nice breeze and no humidity, they're taking it easy. No one's yelling at each other. Everybody's just chilling. But you introduce humidity, game over. Well, the one out there in California, you might find some yelling, some more aggravated people. <laughs> well, I mean, the little pocket I was in, let me say. Uh, yeah. And it also gets hotter. On the way to the airport, we flew into Santa Barbara, which was 10 minutes from the resort. It was wonderful. It's a tiny ass little airport though. It's smaller than Newport News. Uh, which one? Burbank? No, Santa Barbara. Like oh, Santa legit Barbara. Santa Barbara. Yeah. You come in and I think they had four terminals. Like the dude who flew the plane also pulls your bags off. So you know, not really, but it seemed that way. But you come off the the gate and you're like on an escalator and you're right out in the front of the building. You're just out. We walked in, got our our Turo or whatever, and went to the resort. Well, I dropped that Turo off that day, and we flew out of LAX because we wanted to do a red eye. So we flew out late Saturday uh, night and got in Sunday morning. The temperature change from Santa Barbara to LAX, it's about 100 miles is the drive. And the temps went from 71 to as high as 93, back down to um, about 73, 74 at LAX over that hour and a half drive. Yeah, they control the weather. Keep it climate controlled for the celebrities. <laughs> I have my tinfoil hat on. <laughs> it was crazy, though. It was so crazy. But it just got me thinking. I'm like, man, I was walking in here, and I had something else I wanted to talk about, but I forgot about it because I got irritated listening to this conversation of this client being rude to to one of my staff who's super kind. Like, uh, our, our team, man, you know the deal. They're all so kind. They're they're crazy. We're all a little off around here. But um you know, they're just, they're very kind and respectful, professional with clients. And I'm, I hear the conversation and then you can hear the, the client side and I get being irritated. Right. But, but it's not like 
the type of situation where you've been on a list waiting for years for a heart transplant and we call you two days before and we're like, Hey, we can't, you know, we need to, we, we got to push that back. Like you, your, your doodle's still jumping on you and I get it. You're frustrated and, but it's going to be okay. And I appreciate you asking, you know, we'll, we'll let her know that you wish her the best and that she gets well quickly. Thanks chief. Like, I mean, what is it? So just, you know, be kind. We talked a little bit about that last year for a little while. So here's a little reminder. Just, just be kind. You don't got to freak out all the time. Sometimes requires freaking out. But like me at the airport, it didn't require freaking out. I lost it. And I still blame it on the humidity. That's what it is. So be kind, everybody. Uh, we enjoy you. We're excited. I've got a little more travel this summer, but we've got a couple episodes going to be dropping over the next couple of weeks um, that are coming for you that are great. This will probably come out maybe while I'm gone. I'm not sure. We'll see where it lands, but um, we appreciate you share the show, review the show, let people know what's up. We've got an awesome, awesome lineup coming to close out the summer and kicking off September with great guests. And, you know, it's just been a really awesome time. So we appreciate all the comments and the shares and subscription, and we'll talk to you real soon.